How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for Micro Farm for step one. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, and the man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group or channel down below. Let's start the clip. 40 year old man from Missouri comes to physician, one week history of dry cough. No past medical history. Febrile 101 Fahrenheit. Leukocytes 9,000 per microliter. Normal range 4 to 11,000. Auscultation of the chest re reveals crackles in the right lower lobe. The most appropriate antifungal treatment for this patient acts at which the following cellular slash molecular locations. Not from the lengthy clip. Okay, not dramatic here. Yosemite is known to show literally a fungal cell drawn as such with letters at different locations. You need to know which drugs they're referring to. Okay, it's not hard, but you have to know your antifungals. Past level stuff. I see students get this wrong all the time. It's all over the enemy me's in. So let's just whip the answers here. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. It refers to caspofungin, mycofungin, the echinocandins. They inhibit beta 1 3 glucan synthase, so glucan, beta glucan carbohydrate synthesis. USMLE doesn't really care about the use cases of the echinocandins per se. In other words, you don't have to memorize, like, what do we use caspofungin for? Essentially, invasive aspergillosis. But as I said, USMLE doesn't really care. What they will do is just simply mention caspofungin or mycofungin in the stem and then just want you to know, answer beta-glucan carbohydrate synthesis or carbohydrate cell wall synthesis. Okay, that's what they're going to do. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B. Wrong fucking answer refers to amphotericin B and Istatin. Okay, so amphotericin B and Istatin both poke holes in the ergosteral cell membrane. So if you can see choice A, cell wall, it's thicker. Choice B, cell membrane here. So amphotericin B, hard-hitting uh, antifungal, use last resort for disseminated fungemia. Okay, rigors, chills, high fever, generally over 103. Also for CNS fungal infections, cryptococcus neoformans meningitis, they like amphotericin B. Nystatin is going to be used topically for uh, vaginal candidiasis, also used as a mouthwash for oropharyngeal candidiasis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C refers to the azoles, correct answer. Okay, so the conversion of lanostrol to ergostrol is going to be via 14 alpha demethylase. And US only wants you to know that azoles, usually fluconazole, is just the typical slash generic antifungal used for most cases of pneumonia. Okay, so here we just have what appears to be a simple fungal pneumonia in an immunocompetent patient. Okay, there's no past medical history. Ohio, Mississippi, River Valley, Missouri. Okay, we don't need to know which which fungal infection in particular is it. You know, it could be histo, could be blasto. It doesn't really matter. Okay, we just have what appears to be a simple fungal pneumonia, and azoles are what are typically used. Okay, so fluconazole. USMLE can write the answer as. P450 mediated demethylation reaction. That's on one of the NBME exams. They say that there's vaginal candidiasis and oral medications given. OMG, okay, I just said topical nystatin can be used for that, but they say oral medication, and the answer is P450 mediated demethylation reaction. So it's important you know that uh, azole is just typical uh, oral antifungal for most infections. So Itraconazole can be used for sporotrichosis, topical azoles, clotrimazole, myconazole for skin infections. Okay, clearly if it's fucking topical. So tinea corporis, ringworm, uh, for tinea pedis as well. So real quick, choice D, wrong fucking answer, squalene to lenostril is going to be terbinafine. Okay, so inhibits squalene epoxidase. Topical terbinafine can be used for tinea pedis, as well as clotrimazole myconazole, as I just mentioned. Oral terbinafine, classic for anicomycosis, nail bed fungal infections. So that's what they like for terbinafine. They really like that medication. All right, you need to know your antifungals, as I'm chatting about right here. Very past level stuff. EFGH refer to nothing. Okay, just being an asshole, putting extra letters in here. Choice I. You say, no idea what that's referring to. It could refer to griseofolvin. Okay, so if you know your antifungals, the high-yield agents, 
And you say, well, that could be microtubules, right? So groziofulvin inhibits tubulin. Holy shit. They can have that as the answer, just tubulin or microtubules. So oral groziofulvin for patient only is high yield on family medicine 2CK for tinea capitis. All right. So don't confuse with with seborrheic dermatitis, which is actually malassezia species. We weeping papules in the hairline, uh, scaling such weeping papules in the hairline. That's going to be uh, azole or selenium shampoo. Okay, same as malassezia furfur, tinea versa color, hypopigmented lesions on the shoulders, torso, in someone in subtropical areas classically. That's also going to be topical selenium is the treatment. But griseofulvin inhibits microtubules. They like you to know that. So that's your short recap of the antifungals here. I've made tons of clips on my YouTube on this stuff, but I have to drill this because this shows up all over the NBME slash USMLE content. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.